I welcome you all to this Christmas Eve candlelight worship service here at United Lutheran Church. Welcome to those who are joining us through Facebook Live, those joining us over the radio, and of course you who are in our sanctuary uh, this evening. As I said, this is a candlelight worship service, so we will be lighting candles during the singing of Silent Night. Uh, and just one safety reminder about that. Uh, we always tip the unlit candle to the lit candle to avoid that hot wax pouring down on somebody's hand. So keep that in mind as we, uh, uh, we come to that part of our worship service this evening. I would like to say thank you to our, uh, our ushers and those who have been helping us in our preparations and in this service this evening. Uh, thank you to the choir and our musicians and soloists and accompanists and uh, to our tech team. Uh, for making this service possible for those who are joining us uh, through Facebook Live and our radio broadcast tonight. Uh, we continue with our Christmas celebrations uh, on Sunday, December 26th, uh, at our 1015 worship service here in our sanctuary. So you are most welcome to come and join us as we continue in singing in the celebration and praise of the birth of our Savior. I believe that's all the announcements I will make tonight, although if you would like to, following worship service, grab a, a devotional for Christmas Day, uh, they are located on the usher's table out the store or out the back. Would you please now turn in your worship bulletins to our opening hymn, O Come All You Faithful, and would you please stand as you are able.
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us join in prayer. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day, wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. First scripture reading is from Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nations, you have increased his joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, 
a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His, his authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Oh, 
From Luke, Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Reading from Luke chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Just so sweet. 
A reading from Luke chapter 2. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors.
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard as it had been told them.
Tonight is the night. Tonight, all of our preparations are complete or abandoned as the celebration begins. Tonight, we haul all of our hopes and our joys, our griefs and our longings, and place them before the manger. For tonight, tonight is the night our God comes to meet us, all wrapped up in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Tonight, tonight heaven and earth, the holy and the ordinary, are joined in the one who has come to be not God above us somewhere, but God with us. Tonight, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Some of you have come here tonight with hearts that are full of joy and excitement, feeling particularly grateful. After a year of celebrating either online or out in the cold and at a distance for many of us from loved one, it feels good, it feels somewhat normal to be together again in this place. And tonight, others of you are simply going through the motions, your heart heavy or hopeless, yet you're putting on a festive face for those around you to hide the pain or uncertainty. And of course, there are many, perhaps most of us who are holding both joy and sorrow, hope and fear in our hearts. And maybe tonight as you settle into your place in the pew with your candle in your hand, you dare to hope, if only for this hour, that the child whose birth we celebrate this night is able to shine with some light and love and peace and joy into our broken lives and world. Christmas of 2018, I was among those who were going through the motions. Just five months earlier, our beloved daughter Rachel had died suddenly. Nothing felt right in the world and I held little hope that anything would ever feel right again. And that year I wish that I could simply fast forward through Advent and Christmas. Every ritual once enjoyed and shared now simply added to the pain. And yet, when you're the pastor, skipping Christmas isn't actually an option. And nor is it for most of us who live our lives connected to family and community. That year, our Christmas season, our Advent season, began at United with the annual hanging of the green service, and it was to be followed by confirmation students and their families staying to decorate our sanctuary and building for the season. It's usually a joyful evening, but that year I was not feeling it. I stood before the gathered congregation sharing an Advent scripture reading, and it was then out of the corner of my eye that I first caught a glimpse of him. Something, someone was moving above me through the balcony. And eventually the vague image came into focus. Moving near the railing of the balcony, partially hidden from our view, was a small child, six years old, dressed as a ninja a toy bow and arrow in his small hands. Soon, as you can imagine, no one was listening to the reading any longer. Every head was turned watching the child who seemed completely unaware that he had become the center of our attention. Clearly, he thought he was on a super stealthy secret mission. It was all so unexpected and completely out of place. I mean, after all, no one expects the Advent Ninja in the Christmas story. <laughs> but as I watched him creep along, I found myself smiling and then laughing right out loud. Not at him, but at this unexpected, unplanned, and absurd addition to the Advent worship. But as surprised as I was to have this tiny ninja making his way into our worship service, I was even more surprised to find myself smiling 
and then laughing right out loud, a little joy stealing its way into my heart. This child, so completely unexpected, had lightened my heart and opened me to a moment of joy when I thought all joy had eluded me. After the service, the two of us had our picture taken together, the tiny Advent Ninja and me. In the photo, he stands still hooded in all of his ninja gear, his bow and arrow in hand, and I am standing proudly next to him with one of his suction cup arrows stuck squarely in the middle of my forehead. An Advent Ninja. Of course, it's absurd. It clearly doesn't belong in the Christmas story. But let's be honest. Almost every character in the Christmas story is unexpected, unlikely. Most of us have heard this story so many times. We're so familiar with it that that familiarity gets in the way of our understanding, our seeing just how fantastic and odd it really all was. Consider again what we have simply come to expect to hear tonight. God's coming among us as one of us involves an unwed virgin with a scandalous pregnancy, odorous shepherds, traveling pagan soothsaying magi, celestial otherworldly creatures singing in the skies, and at the center of it all, a newborn completely dependent on the care of others, birthed in a borrowed barn and then wrapped in claws and lying in a bed of hay. It is absurd when you think about it that God chose to enter our world of flesh and blood in such a manner. Tonight, tonight we're listening to a story filled with odd and unexpected players. We might have expected instead to hear that God's coming among us in the flesh and blood would involve priests and temples, royal palaces and royal decrees. And instead, this event happened within history, but there's no governor or emperor who would have noticed it. God is entering our world, inaugurating a new reign, and God chose to do all of this with the most unlikely, the unexpected, and those in the midst of scandalous circumstance. This friends, is how our story as followers of Jesus begins. And so why is it today that being part of the church so often means you need to check part of yourself at the door? The parts of you that smell or the parts of you that feel afraid like the shepherds or the parts of you that seem scandalous to others like Mary's pregnancy or the part of you that is pondering what it all means and if it could possibly have something to do with you. And yet this is how the story of Jesus begins. And isn't it strange that somehow our Christian faith and Christ's church on earth have instead come to be associated with status and respectability and a whole lot of emphasis on who's in and who's out. That's simply not the story we get with Jesus. God rarely acts in ways that make sense or seem respectable and predictable. Instead, God shows up in all the wrong people to announce the birth of Jesus is for all the world. Jesus' whole ministry involves eating and hanging out with people that the religious folks don't really approve of. Jesus touched the unclean. He welcomed women and children and those who thought that they were second-class citizens, not only to the world, but to God. But friends, I wonder tonight if the most impossible part of this story for each one of you is to consider tonight that this story, this birth is for you. 
the angels who announced the good news of the Savior's birth to the unlikely shepherds saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace among those whom God favors. We human creatures together with all creation, we are all favored by God. Tonight we heard Michael Marcotte sing beautifully, Oh, Holy Night. I read a reflection this year that focused on one particular lyric of, of that song. The lyric, Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. Can we allow this story into us tonight so that our souls feel their worth? God entered into our world in Bethlehem because God longs for us to know and experience the love of God. God entered into this world of flesh and blood among the most unlikely characters so that we might know that our ordinary, sometimes smelly, filled with fear and often absurd lives have found favor with God. Can we give up? As Brene Brown puts it, hustling for our worthiness and feel our worth this night in the light of our God who has come to be with us and for us and who will not let us go. Tonight, beloved is where we begin. In the love of God born for us this night in Jesus, in the birth of Jesus, we see that there is no height or depth to which God will not go to reach us. This night, we see God's truth about our lives and indeed the whole of creation, that we have worth, that we are loved beyond our wildest dreams, that those around us are all treasured children of God. God came to dwell in our ordinary human flesh in and through the most unexpected people, and in this way hallowed all creation and set for us God's way, that we live in such a way that we see and honor ourselves and all others as favored, beloved people of God. I don't know what you're feeling this night, joy, gratitude, grief, or some mixture of it all. Whatever it is for you tonight, may Jesus, who slipped into this world in the most unexpected way, surprise you with the wonder of God's extravagant love. And at the manger, may your soul feel its worth, and there may you see all others as treasured children of God. May the angel song fill you with a surprising peace and joy. And may you take your place in the company of all those who live in and out of the love born for us this night in Jesus. Amen.
at this point in our service, we will be receiving our Christmas offering. The ushers will come down the aisles at this time and begin passing. Congregation, please stand. And let us pray. Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with your gifts, let them be blessings for others. With the trees of the field, with all earth and heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to God's honor. Blessed are you, Prince of Peace. You rule the earth with truth and justice. Send your gift of peace to all the nations of the world. Blessed are you, Son of Mary. You share our humanity. Blessed are you, Son of God, you dwell among us as the Word made flesh. Prince of Peace. Lord of hosts, establish your holy realm with justice and righteousness from this time on and forevermore. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, and the everlasting peace of Jesus, who is Savior, Christ, and Lord. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and keep you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, Christ is born for you and for all. We join in our sending him joy to the world. 